I gather Anne is on the line. Anne? Anne? Yes, good morning, Mr. Hughes. How are you? I'm all right. And you? Well, I'm trying to hang in there. What happened because to you? I, too, have been affected by COVID. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yes, um, I'm, uh, I'm in the medical field. Mm-hmm. And um, I do come in contact with COVID patients quite often. I might not be intimately involved with their management, but I do have some impact on the management of COVID patients. Uh-huh. And um, where I work, we employ at least 20 uh, um, clerical staff and middle management. And all of our staff have been offered the opportunity to get vaccinated when the first batch was um available. I have since gotten my two doses and You I'm got a, your I'm two doses, you said? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. And I'm and I'm among eight of the twenty that have been vaccinated. But um we go home to our families and we try to encourage those of our families who are not vaccinated to to get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. I have siblings. This is Antigua. I come from a family of ten siblings. How many? Ten. Ten. Yeah. Your line is uh, not so good, so I'm not hearing oh, you me... sometimes. Uh huh. I have a Right. I'm ten siblings. Yes, sounding good. And better. um, a week ago, I lost my sister to COVID. Hmm. Right. It's um it's been a difficult time because I did say to her, Go get the vaccine and her response was I'm not going anywhere COVID is. I don't take public transport and um you know, right now I just wanna wait and see what's happening. This is mm-hmm. My sister died alone. Mm. And I, I just wanted to say, I've sat back and I've seen all of what is on social media. This is TikTok, Facebook, news. YouTube, that is being passed off as science. And, um, and even by people this in my own family. And mm-hmm. um, I, I decided that I wasn't, you know, I was just going to ignore it. Mm-hmm. But I think that we ought to get involved this and try and spread the, the truth. Yes? Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't allowed to see my sister. I couldn't see her. Mm-hmm. And, and she died alone. Ma'am, it yeah. is one of the most brutal things about this disease, this virus, COVID-19. It robs you of that crucially important final moment to say, you goodbye. know, goodbye. Yeah. I said it here yesterday morning. It is, I, I, ca- I can't believe, begin to imagine, yeah, how wicked that is for people yeah who are losing their loved ones and can't say, hold them to say goodbye to even say i love you you know um she couldn't breathe she was confused when her oxygen this saturation was falling and was just fighting because of the hypoxia to, to her brain Mm-hmm. And um, even now that she has passed, it is surreal. You can't believe it. And for me, this as somebody in the healthcare delivery system, I'm saying, where did I fail? How old was she? She was 57. Mm. 
she has four children, and you say to yourself, if I'm in the healthcare delivery service, and I and my own family won't even trust me to to, to do right by them. Is it, is it now going to take that every family in this country has to be impacted for persons to now believe that COVID is real? Hmm. Hmm. Was she vaccinated? No, she wasn't. Did you encourage her to be vaccinated? I did, and I and I just shared with you that her response was that mm-hmm. she's not taking public transportation. <clears throat> she's not going anywhere where COVID is. She went between her house and my mother's house. Mm-hmm. And whenever she needed to go anywhere, this she she was driven in a, in a private car. Mm-hmm. So she didn't feel the need to, to be vaccinated. Yeah. She traveled twice to the United States between last year and this year mm-hmm. and still did not take it because she didn't figure that she needed to you know and it 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 tears you apart this is Antigua mm-hmm. breaking news. it tears you apart to know that you on the one hand you're sacrificing your health to help patients that are COVID positive to get through their treatment and at the same time you have persons in your own vicinity mm-hmm. that are reluctant to do to take the vaccine mm-hmm. as I said to you I have 20 persons who work in my facility and it's only 8 of us who have taken the vaccine and these are 20 healthcare workers yes well, they're healthcare workers and affiliated. Mm-hmm. So yesterday when I heard you say that um, the ministry needs to take it out there to the public, that, that to me, again, is, is going to be a difficult situation mm-hmm. because if you have healthcare professionals who themselves are not taking the vaccine, how can I go out there to say to somebody else, you need to take the vaccine? Mm-hmm. Mm. It's it's like a you know what is good for you, what 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 yes, I do is not what I want you to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that's one hurdle that the ministry has to face as well. This is yes. Yes. News. Yeah. It's it's very difficult, and perhaps as I said, until it touch until it reaches home, because in my own family, um, my brother took the vaccine. My stepfather took the vaccine. My son got COVID. He lived in the States. Um, and we were, and that was it. Hmm. And it's not until my sister died that I now have three of my siblings, four of my siblings going to take the vaccine. Oh. Yeah. You now realize the danger. And, you know, it had to take the loss of my sister for that to happen. Tragic. Very. Very. So I I don't know I if if my story will help one other person out there to go and take the vaccine, and I'm glad I shared it. Yes, and I'm glad you have. I'm really glad that you have. Because people need to hear from those who have suffered, are suffering, grieving in circumstances like these. Yeah. Yes, I, you know, I want to tell you something again. Mm-hmm. All right, so I, so last week Thursday, I did some procedures and I had about four patients, and um, two of them were elderly patients who had stage four cancer, mm-hmm. and I said to them, "Have you taken the vaccine?" And they both said yes. And I had two other patients that were not that elderly. I said to them, have you taken the vaccine? No, they're waiting. And I looked at it and I said to myself, here it is. We have two persons who know that they're going to die. They have stage four cancer, so they know that they're going to die. But they still want to live those few moments, those few weeks, Mm -hmm. those few months that COVID will rob them off if they should get COVID. 
Mm-hmm. And I told this and yes, the other persons that were really not, they, you know, they weren't ill. They were just for a checkup. And I told this story to my staff. And I said, so here it is. Somebody who knows that they're going to die. We all are going to die, right? This but these persons know for sure that is. cancer is going to cause be the cause of their death. Mm-hmm. And they want to cherish those few months or years or few weeks that they have. Yes. And the other persons who have no comorbidities are just like, you know, I want to see what it will do. I want to see what happens. Um, Yeah, and I'm listening to all of the stories out there. Yeah. Are you, what are you, what what do you do in the health service, ma'am, if you don't mind? Imaging. Imaging, yeah. Yeah. I see all of what COVID has done. Oh, you... That that's the MRI you do? Yes. CT, uh-huh. MRI, stuff like that. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. So you yes. see what it does to the organs? To the body? Well, most most of it most times to the lungs. What do you see? Uh, Hold on for me. Hold on for me. Tell me after the break. We're speaking with Anne. She's a healthcare worker. She's relating a very heart-rending story of losing her sister to COVID, a sister who refused to take the vaccine and has since passed. Her death has somehow contributed to four of her siblings now deciding to take the vaccine. Anne is in the business of imaging in the health service, and just before the break, I asked her, she's able to see what COVID does to the lungs in particular. And I'm asking you, Anne, tell us, what does it do to the lungs? How does it damage it? The varying degrees of pneumonia. Um, Not the typical pneumonia you get with, say, a bacterial infection. But I also have seen bizarre things, yeah. I've seen things that um, heralds like end-stage lung disease. So these might eventually be persons that would need a lung transplant. Um, I saw something recently that I had to go online to research, where in a young person there was Ear all, ear all over in the chest. So it's just um, a layman's term. And, you know, perhaps there are other things that we're seeing that we're, we're not attributing directly to COVID because they can present, like, other things that persons may have. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Or they may exacerbate other chronic conditions that they may have. Mm-hmm. But... COVID is not a joke. Mm-hmm. COVID is not a joke, and it's not a plot. You know, it is impossible for so many persons to be in on this conspiracy. This is Antigua mm-hmm. breaking news. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Anne. How are you You're coping? Welcome. How are you coping? It's difficult. It's very difficult. Mm-hmm. It's extremely difficult because, you know, um, she's my younger sister. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And um, this, is this didn't have to be. Exactly. Yeah, it didn't have to be. Yeah. And that, that, that is one of my fears, that there are going to be so many more this people dying. Who need not, yeah, because they refuse to give themselves a fighting chance. That is what worries me deeply more than anything else. We are going to lose so many more unnecessarily, unnecessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing, Anne. Thank you too. I really appreciate the opportunity to do so. Yes. Okay. Thank you. This is Antigua Breaking News.
This is Antigua Breaking News. This is Antigua Breaking News. This is Antigua Breaking News. This is Antigua Breaking News. This is Antigua Breaking News. This is Antigua Breaking News. This is Antigua Breaking News. This is Antigua Breaking News.